Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I thought I would sit down and do another video for you guys and gals. I'm going to get a sip of my water first. My radio voice going on, let's talk about this. All right, there's always a bit of confusion because uh, I'm doing my vlogs, which are done on the same day that they're dated as, and then I have informative videos in the mix where I use stock footage from old workouts, and I might have those up five, six weeks after they were filmed. That's when they might hit. So I get people who are like, hey, you know, if you want to work biceps, I'll get people who are like, why are you doing pull-ups in this, this video? And it's they don't know that it's old footage. So I do need to clarify that. And I think this is something worth talking about with, with some of our movements of why we pick certain things that we are doing. Um, I'm doing chin-ups right now. I'm gonna push them really hard because I need the biceps. Quite, I'm just gonna be, be frank about it. I'm at a point to where my back development is so good that I've now had more than one person tell me, okay? More than one person tell me in person who do know a little bit about physiques, right? We're not talking just general population here, who have told me they're like, your back is so big in comparison to everything else. They're like, your lats are so wide in person, not talking about on camera, that it actually hurts your aesthetics at this point. They're like, your your lats overshadow every other muscle in your body. They're like, it's, it's, it's freakishly disproportionate almost. This is what I've been told. So when we start looking at lifts and we know that probably my arms probably in general need the most work out of any muscle on my body if I wanna look better. Again, I did a lot of powerlifting for a long time. So I am working more on aesthetics while still keeping my big three in relatively heavy, but I'm doing hard versions of them, right? So what are we doing with the benching? Flat back, ultra wide grip, you know, pausing, no wrist straps, no belt, okay? But I'm able to get four with 315 right now doing that, so I'm okay with that. It's not my all time best. But considering it's a harder version, I'll take it. I'm now working back with the beltless deep paw squats, and I'm going to hammer those again, which we discussed in another previous video. Uh, it's pulling with the stiff bar, all that stuff. So that's what I'm doing there. So when it comes over to the pull-ups and the chin-ups, I have to think in terms of what do I need? Because I think pull-ups, like the way that I do pull-ups, and I sometimes I will get people who say, oh, your pull-ups, I don't like the way you do them. You'll never get a back doing that. You were telling a person who, who has been told multiple times their lats and their back is so freakishly big <laughs> that it overshadows the rest of their physique. Context. I think I perform back exercises in a manner that would overdevelop my back to the point to where it's freakish and, and, and overpowers the rest of my physique. So do your back exercises the way that I do if your goal is to have a back that grows faster than everything else on your body and you can't keep anything else caught up to. However, I'm applying some of those same methods to the other stuff because people don't seem to realize I actually get a really deep stretch on my lats on pull-ups and things. What you're seeing is my, my elbows not locking, right? This is my elbows locked. That is my full, right? That hurt. You heard some popping in there. That was me squeezing as hard as I possibly could. Locking those elbows. You see me do that at a dead hang. So if you're seeing what doesn't look like a stretch at the bottom is my arms. My lats are spreading. I've spread the scapula. In fact, I focus on that. To me, that's the most important part. When I do rows, I do the same thing. When I used to do even the pen leg rows, I would actually spread my scapula at the bottom, turn my elbows out. So that you have to use the lats from a stretch position to pop it off the floor. Okay, so on and so forth. Uh, those are the things that I've done. And I think pull-ups, I think weighted pull-ups, if you want massive lats, oh, weighted pull-ups are so good. I think rows are great for overall back development. I think they help with lats tremendously. Like that combination, which is a lot of what I've done, I've done a lot of types of rows. You know, when people say, well, what's your favorite type? I, I, well, because I want more bicep, I think the Yates row. But if, if, if I had to pick one type of row, I'm probably gonna go with a seal row. For back, just for middle and upper back. 
I can see over them. But I don't want to have to pick, you know. I have to pick. I, I don't like rows. I think rows are great. So, uh, you know, in, in that context, uh, I love the wide grip pull-ups. I think they're phenomenal. I, I get such a tremendous pump in my lats. But you know what? My lats get engaged. At this point, my lats will engage on anything that I do. They try to take over. So even when I do chins now, which here's the thing, I'm moving more weight than I do on the pull-up through a longer range of motion and I'm involving more muscles, okay? I still get a great lat pump. Those, those hard sets, when I'm doing sets of 10 with a 45 pound plate, those, those are intense. My goal, I wanna to get to 10 with two 45 pound plates. Like that is, that is my actual goal on chins. Especially or get multiple sets of 10. Man, then we're cooking with gas, okay? But I get a massive arm pump and burn on it, right? My biceps get lit. And in the case of me, and again, I know other coaches who feel that same way. They're like, pull-ups are great, dude. They're so great for the back, but they're like, you work more muscles with the chin. You know, if we're just try, if we're trying to get bigger, they they work some extra stuff. Biceps, right? Possibly upper chest, some other things. Like they're they're so good for that. Um, I would argue pull-ups are probably better for lats, but in my case, they're already overshadowing everything. I'm already disproportionate. Do I really need to do that, or should I be saying, "Hey, let's do the the version that's going to put more overall muscle in other places and build these these arms up a little bit more?" And that's the plan. So that's why I'm doing it that way. I'm really really concentrating on hammering my biceps. And I want to get as much growth as possible out of them on every single set that I do. All right? So that's why I'm, I'm doing the chins and I'm pushing them really hard. And I'm taking sets to failure. You guys are watching me fail and stuff on there. Like I tried to grab 11 reps with that 45 and I moved it a few inches and I couldn't go any higher. It's done. Same thing. Then I'm coming behind and doing very, very, very strict full range of motion curls now to where I've come up, you know, to the, to the face and we're coming all the way down to a lockout because I need the arms to grow. So I do that afterwards. Uh, I've contemplated at some point considering, a, a, you know, a preacher curl bench as much as I don't like them because I think they're risky. But if, if you're strict and you don't try to do stupid stuff like partial reps on them or ego lift, not as big of a deal. I think if you stay light and super strict and just go to failure, uh, probably much safer. But I do think they cause bicep tears. And I see a lot of guys the way I see a lot of even influencers perform their preacher curls like doing partials on them, skipping that bottom with a weight they can't really do full reps with. It's coming, guys. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Hope you have a good surgeon lined up. Hope you don't like your biceps too much. They don't ever bounce back the same after they you tear one. But, you know, that's where I'm at with it. So for me, the chin-ups, it's, it's saying, can I pick the absolute best version of my, my pulling exercise for biceps? Which one is gonna give me the most bicep development? And then let's, let's find a full range of motion, strict isolation movement to do afterwards because they have to come up. So that's why I'm doing it. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I'll talk to you guys and gals next time.